Welcome back to the basics of digital audio signal processing and machine learning for audio using Python. We are now at the code example number three, and this time we will start to touch the surface, to scratch the surface of machine learning and deep learning. Of course, we cannot straight away dive into the concepts of machine learning and deep learning. We still need a lot of um, knowledge before we can start doing things in the fields of machine learning. We still need a lot of um, mathematical background, also programming background, but we will get there. Nevertheless, I decided to start using some deep learning frameworks, specifically this time is PyTorch, so that when we are with a bit more technical background and we will be able to uh, start looking into machine learning, we are already familiar with the framework and some concepts um, inside is this framework. So um, it's very unusual that you have machine learning courses for a very basic um, and for beginners. Usually most of the machine learning courses you will find out there, they are already um, tailored to people with a lot of programming experience with a lot of um, mathematical and theoretical background but we will go step by step and we'll start now touching scratching the surface start to use some of these uh, frameworks and this is part of our code example number three so we start by importing torch audio we will talk about Torch Audio later, but Torch Audio is a library for audio and signal processing with PyTorch. Okay, so what's PyTorch? So PyTorch is an open source machine learning framework that accelerates the path from research prototyping to production deployment. So in the world of uh, deep learning, you hear a lot about PyTorch or TensorFlow, Keras, there used to be other frameworks, but these two I consider the most popular nowadays. We will try to see both of them during this course. We will start with PyTorch and later on we will introduce you to TensorFlow and Keras. Uh, so TensorFlow and Keras, they used to be separate. So Keras was using a TensorFlow as the back end, but there was um, a change and I think TensorFlow acquired Keras and now it's part of the TensorFlow. Uh, this is for future. So we will import Torch Audio. Here is very similar to what we did before with Librosa. So from Torch Audio we are loading. This time we don't need to download the WAV file we are using. First we can directly pass the URL and this torch audio load will take care of download and then we'll have a waveform and a sample rate very similar to what we did with Librosa very similar to what we did with a SciPy wave file then torch audio also have this info method that will get the signal information of a, an audio file and we are storing this metadata so this metadata we will know things like a sample rate of this audio file, the number of channels, the bits per sample, and the type of encoding. So it's also similar to what we did with SciPy or Librosa, but there we could not get this metadata, this information about the file. Here with Torch Audio Info, we can know this uh, metadata. Then what we're doing, we're, we're printing some information about this waveform so we know the shape the type so it's using something what is called torch float 32 so it's of course related to numpy uh, float 32 that we've seen before but we are not using numpy this time we are using torch so we're using pytorch pytorch they have thing that's called tensors so it's not a numpy array but now we're talking with about tensors and we will look in more detail about tensors when we 
go to the code explanation and we'll go step by step and line by line. But we're printing something like the minimum value, the maximum value, the mean and the standard deviation. So maximum value and minimum value we've seen before. And we already noticed here that it's a float 32 from minus one to one. So it's more similar to Librosa, our first code example that it takes this wave file, this data, and it already transforms it to an array or in this case a tensor of type floating po uh, point 32 and it uh, normalizes so there is a range from minus one to one. We will talk about mean and the standard deviation in the theory part. So it's very important when we are dealing with um, machine learning and deep learning to have these basics of statistics. So we will have to take a look at this very basic what is an average and what is a standard deviation. We will talk about that in the theory part and then we're plotting so we've seen plotting before but now i'm having much more details here so this plot is a bit more complex than the basic one we had so it's not a plot it's a, what is called a stem plot so we are dealing with digital audio so we don't have continuous values we have discrete values we have discrete values in the let's call it a sample domain, we have samples and not time and we also have a discrete value in terms of a bit depth and here we have plot, so I'm loading this uh, audio file and we've seen something before in um, slicing of an array but here we use slicing of a tensor and we are plotting just one cycle of this sine wave and we are also shifting this um, sine wave just so in the theory the DSP theory part we will talk about digital sinusoidal waveforms so we'll talk about sine waves cosine waves the relations between them but in the digital domain so as we see here the formula for the sine wave is a bit different so in the time domain we will have here is an amplitude times sine of omega t so we're in the time continuous domain plus a phase so it's a function of time where a is the amplitude f is the frequency omega is the angular frequency and it has its relation to the frequency and we have the phase of course we are going to dive into this in the theory we will have a short revision about sine wave in the continuous time domain but our focus in the discrete time domain we're talking about digital audio so here we will see t actually is equal to n t s so t s is the, is the period of the sampling frequency so it will always be related to the sampling frequency when we are in the digital domain but of course we'll talk about that in the dsp theory part so our code example will be the same what we've been doing before we first loaded an audio and played it back then we loaded an audio in a different way and we plotted and now we are loading audio using pytorch a deep learning framework and we are also plotting in a different way and we are just going deeper a bit in the plot so we are putting annotations here we put a legend so we will go through this step by step line by line when we reach the code explanation of this example next we will just see the ESP theory behind it so we will talk about sinusoidal we talk about sines and cosines in the digital discrete time domain and we will also just briefly discuss a bit of about mean and standard deviation that's it and i see you next time